where we harvest all our goods. Alrighty. Yeah. Excited. Yeah. So this is the pirate place. It's <laughs> little old island. It's a place called Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. Cruz into Santa Cruz. Yeah. After a long thinking and grieving process, the girls had decided to try to fix the boat instead of selling it. But they would have to go back to Norway to work for another season in order to afford this very, very expensive replacement. And we also needed a place with good infrastructure to even find a company who could fix it. So we set off to motor to the big neighboring island of Tenerife. So now we made it to <laughs> So now we made it to Santa Cruz de Tenerife, which is basically the biggest town in Tenerife. And here is another big marina. I'm every day going around here asking all the boats, putting my flyers on all the boats. So I'm yeah, looking in Disneyland every day too to just get all the opportunities that I can find across the Atlantic. I really want to do it this season, it would be so nice. After today I will start hitchhiking across the whole island. Oh, clinging my hand. <laughs> Such a cute dog. And I will go to all the big marinas and ask all the people there and put my flyer everywhere. So I, yeah, basically get all the opportunities that there are and talk to many people and leave them my contact information if they hear from anyone else. And yeah, I'm pretty confident that I could find an opportunity this season and if not yeah I'm stuck on this island kind of <laughs> but yeah we will see how life turns out so today the hitchhiking marathon to all the harbors with sailboats in Tenerife starts right now I'm walking outside of Santa Cruz to another port which is like eight kilometers one way so I have to walk a pretty long way, but it's very nice. You can see these crazy favela-like settlements, but beautiful settlements outside of the city and the mountains here. It's a really special city, Santa Cruz. I have to hurry kind of because each day that passes decreases my chance of finding another sailboat that crosses the Atlantic. So I'm gonna go as fast as possible and not focus so much on seeing the island which I still could do another time, you know, but sailboats this season are gonna be gone at some point, so yeah, that's the plan. Uh, we will see how it goes. Another challenge of this whole endeavor of finding a sailboat across the Atlantic is also that you also need to feel safe on the boat and you have to find a boat that is good maintained in a good condition. It's not a piece of shit because some people are just crazy and sail across oceans with boats that are not ready for that at all, which was not the case with my last boat it seemed to be ready and perfect in perfect condition so you never know still if you have a good boat stuff can break it happens and also you need to have a good connection with the people you're sailing with because imagine you are in a one bed apartment with the same person for four weeks that is a long time and you're really close so 
you need to have a good connection you need to understand each other so considering all these factors it's really really difficult to find a boat across the Atlantic especially if you're late in the season like I am but I will try everything I can next harbor This marina is mainly small sailing boats and many many motor boats and it's more like a, a local harbor where not many world traveling cruisers with sailboats come in so it wasn't really successful I put my letter on a couple boats that looked like they might go anywhere but probably not and I spoke with some nice people it was very nice and some people told me I should go to the south of the island which I will now I will go a little further where there's a beach and little cute little town I think because I cannot reach any other ports today and I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of the day. Oh yeah, after all this walking I think I deserve something like that. Grilled tuna, a lot of beautiful things around it. Some potatoes, some bread, some beer. And here we have a beautiful beach with beautiful weather. I always have to remind myself that it's February, it's absolutely crazy. And then over here this crazy settlement on the mountain, which looks really, really beautiful. Today it's time to hitchhike out of the capital of Tenerife, down south to the coast, to the other marinas. And I'm really excited to finally hitchhike again. And a new place is always exciting, so we will see how hitchhiking in Tenerife of Spain will go. a little further where there's more space for the cars to stop which is more comfortable for me always so I'm gonna try my luck now here less cars but better spot so now something really really funny happened suddenly there's another hitchhiker appearing and they say like hey you're also hitchhiking <laughs> and then he's like he's like yes and I know you I know you from YouTube <laughs> yeah and now we are trying to hitchhike to to south yeah Las Galletas yeah 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 so. He's yes. also trying to go south, so we decided to hitchhike together. And he's, by the way, Marius from Poland. Yes, exactly. So really, really funny to meet you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get him right. Encontro Irene. Hola. Una cubana uh, militar. ¿Cómo se llama? Mili militar español. Militar español, sí. Muchas, muchas gracias por uh, este viaje. De nada. Y mucha suerte en tu día. Muchas gracias a vosotros. Que tengáis buen viaje. Gracias. Uh. I arrived pretty much in the south in Las Galletas. And I have pretty much one month left to maybe find a sailboat. After that, it's pretty much. Yeah, no chance. So this one month now, I will cycle the whole island and go to all the marinas. And then, you know, once I've been to all of them, I will go to the first one again, because there might be new boats that cross the Atlantic. So I'm gonna have to be constantly hitchhiking around the island, going to all the harbors. It's going to be really, really exhausting. And also right now, walking five kilometers to the next town over there because there's another harbor and my hostel is in this town so that I don't have to carry my backpack while asking for the boats that's really really pleasant and exhausting at the same time and tomorrow I will go to this harbor in this town in the morning and then I will continue to hitchhike to the next harbor 
and find a hostel near that harbor and yeah it's gonna be a crazy month of looking for sailboats this area right here is a complete contrast to the capital santa cruz it's basically only tourists here like retired like germans and, and whatnot and british people and almost everyone here is like not spanish looking you know and more tourists than local it seems like and all these apartments here are just holiday apartments I, I don't like this place it doesn't it doesn't have it's not authentic anymore it's just a place full of tourists because of the weather and nothing else all the way over there is the town of the marina i just found a like a really cool almost like a lake created by some walls of lava just turning off the ocean it's pretty nice emerald green next harbor so i think the best way is to talk to the people on the sailboats directly and to put my flyers on the sailboats because just hanging one flyer in the maritime office is not doing a lot the gates are always locked so i either need to wait until some people are going outside to get inside or i just yeah, climb around it or, or ask the officials if they even open for me the doors that also happened in the past so yeah I will try my luck here and we'll see it's a quite a big marina I didn't expect it okay I just got my mind a little bit blown I just got an opportunity from like a Polish couple they want to sail from the Canaries to Madeira then to the Azores and then to Nova Scotia in Canada that's like <laughs> that's crazy I didn't even think about that route and that's why I'm kind of a little bit blown away and they said I can join them and I still have to think about it <laughs> and they're leaving in like like two or three weeks and then they're gonna spend like two months on the Azores and I have to get off the boat in the Azores, which is fine. And then I can join them after that to Newfoundland in Canada, like the island, the beautiful island of Canada. And <laughs> yeah, this changes my whole plan of the trip. I always expected to arrive either in the Caribbean or in Brazil and then to Central America with sailboats. But I mean, hitchhiking through Canada, through the US, Mexico, and then, you know, try to find somewhere a boat along the Pacific coast to cross the Pacific that would, would be so so epic wow I have to think about it it's like that's crazy the opportunities to get in life it's unbelievable and it was like the second boat they asked <laughs> and they said yes we're crossing the Atlantic but not now and it that response like shocked me because I was so used to from hundreds and hundreds of boats that are already asked always getting the response no no we're not going across the Atlantic no one is going across the Atlantic anymore you're too late always the res these responses which are kind of demotivating but in a sense also motivating and suddenly I got the response yes <laughs> which was oh shit <laughs> am I dreaming <laughs> so now I'm walking back through the desert here <laughs> an amazing sunrise sunset eating an ice cream and I'm extremely happy like how lucky can I be like what the? <laughs> and the Polish captain of that boat he has insane amounts of experience of sailing and his boat is a really really strong steel expedition boat really modern really big really fancy inside I could take a look inside a lot of space like for up to nine people or something it would be amazing to learn so much more about sailing from him hitchhiking Canada and the US which I would have to do in that case would be just amazing I mean that would be a dream and then hitchhiking down to Mexico or somewhere on the Pacific coast I would have to find the next sailboat to go across the Pacific that's so far in the future I don't even want to think about it but I mean that's that's kind of the next step after the next step after the next step <laughs> But now I have to really do some research and I have to look how it is with the visas. Madeira and the Azores are Portugal, that's no problem. But then uh, Canada, maybe it's a problem. US, maybe it's a problem because I visited Iran and Pakistan. They don't like if you visit these countries, even as a tourist. So I have to see if I can get these visas, otherwise it's a problem. Exciting time, really, really exciting times. <laughs>